Hello everybody, I'm Yolanda, aka Creative Mommy of Two, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to do a whip and chat. So I'm going to take off the plastic cover for my work in progress. Oh yeah, then we can have a little ramble, shall we? So let's see what I'm going to start with today. I'm going to start at the end of my Should I? Shouldn't I? No, I'm going to start with the details a bit more. So I'm going to start with this color. So for these projects, I usually just use the bags for like kidding up because yeah i'm just going to put them in here anyway so I'm not going to do more work than that so ta-da <laughs> and i basically just put everything left over in one of these bags so in case i have missed a color i can still see what color i missed so yeah first off how are you all doing? I hope you all had a wonderful week. Mine was a bit... Yeah. Ugh. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Because today we are starting again with a little bit of Dutch movie stuff. And I'm needing to... I most of the times just scrape off of these pencils. I have one of these wax pencils that I just can sharpen whenever I need to. And I personally just scrape the tip off in case it doesn't stick anymore so I don't need to sharpen it like for just a little bit of dirt. But yeah, then when it's there's enough off of it, then I'm going to sharpen it again. Because otherwise, probably this entire pencil would have been gone already. And I personally think these are nicer to work with when they don't have a very sharp point. So, yeah. But yeah, as I said, I'm going to do some movie and diamond stuff. This week, I am going to tell you another couple of Dutch people in the film industry. Some actors, some directors. I do believe I also have a few producers and other people in the list, some of which I actually didn't even know were Dutch. <laughs> so even I learned something when researching. <laughs> so yeah, we're going as per usual, at least this year, I am going to start with the movies and diamonds stuff in case you don't want to see it. Well, you can better skip ahead a little bit uh, because then I'm going to ramble on about my life stuff and if you only want to see the movies and diamond stuff you can we'll keep watching and we'll get that filmed first so I'm going to Turn over my laptop so I can read what all is written here. In case you're wondering what text is on my sleeve. Don't know if you can see it entirely, but it says Sailor Moon. Because I have my Sailor Moon sweater on. <laughs> That's a show I always loved as a kid. So, yeah. I have now opened a Dutch, uh, well, a Dutch and English Wikipedia peach page beach <laughs> and it's the cinema of the netherlands and i'm at the part of dutch filmmakers and actors abroad so a few of them i potentially told you about last year i do know one of these people i went into a little bit more of detail in the first movies and diamonds video i did this year so yeah we'll get to that in a little bit but yeah, since I need to read out a bit more and read it, or at least read it in my head, 
It can be that I'm a little bit less of a diamond painter this week and a little bit more of a reader, but yeah, can't have everything. <laughs> I'm just going to try my best to make it entertaining and hopefully that works. So we'll see how everything will go. I'm first going to grab a new color so I get that out of the way. Easy if I would put my stopper back in. Normally I would have wrapped my little small trays I got from New Craft Day, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, I have them in use at the moment, so there are drills in that. So yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> so I'm just going to be using a regular socket. So, yeah, it says here, the most successful Dutch actors in Hollywood are Rutger Hauer. He is known in Hollywood for the movie Blade Runner. Most of these movies have, these have just one or two people. So, in case you don't know them from that. <laughs> so, yeah, Rutger Hauer, Blade Runner, Jeroen Krabbe from The Fugitive, Famke Janssen. I do believe I mentioned her last year. And if you hear that, sorry, my husband is flushing the toilet. <laughs> He's upstairs, so you probably hear the water flushing down through the pipes in the wall. <laughs> but yeah, so Famke Janssen, she is, I don't know if she's entirely Dutch or partly, I'm going to just check it out because now I want to know. Uh... Yes, he went on later. I was thinking, like, I do know that there are a few that are born in the Netherlands, but not really, like, Dutch by heart, let's call it like that, because, yeah, they moved early enough. Yeah, so Famke Janssen is from X-Men. Uh, Carice van Houten is, for example, Game of Thrones. She has a bit more. But, yeah. So, filmmakers besides Paul Verhoeven, which I talked about in the first Movies and Diamonds video of uh, this year, who successfully began a career in Hollywood, includes Jan de Bond, who uh, started as a cinematographer huh, words, before directing big budget action movies like Speed and Twister, screenwriter turned director Menno Mays. Credits include The Color Purple and Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. And producer Peter Jan Brugge. Glory con Consenting Adults, The Pelican Reef, Bullworth, The Insider, Miami Vice, Defiance, A Love and Other Drugs. Uh, let's see... This one I didn't. Roel Reine. It says here. Oh, I need to move. <laughs> that did not go very well. I think I moved something around. Ah. <sighs> Do I, do I, do I have it open here somewhere? Hi, ay, 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 it's going great already. Okay, I'm going to pause you a bit. Hold on. Okay, and I'm back again. Okay, this is starting out to be a mess. So, <laughs> yeah, this is starting uh, great already. But yeah, as I said, Roel Rijn, uh He is a director and he moved to Hollywood where he became an influential, influential 
words hard. <laughs> Director slash producer of straight to DVD films, including the Steven Seagal um, vehicle? Pistol whipped. Even though I don't know a lot of these names. So let's see, let's see. Those are not the very known. Here I was. So in the early 2000s, actor Anthony Kamerling played the American independent film Five Fingers, in which ironically American actor Ryan Phillip plays the leading Dutch character. So yeah, that's why I wanted to include him. <laughs> so yeah, they have a Dutch guy playing an American, an American guy playing a Dutchman. At least he could help each other out with like accents and stuff. So that might be helpful. Because what way to learn a better language than from somebody from that country? So yeah. But I thought that would be funny. <laughs> but yeah, he also played a supporting part in The Exorcist, the beginning. So he has another, a few other small roles. He, he isn't known to be like a big actor or anything. And then... Uh, Telka Rutte, she is in, uh, zups, made her US debut in Highlander, The Source. Films like In Bruges, In Transit, and The American soon followed. And we also have Jorik van Wageningen. He made a name for himself in Beyond Borders, The Chronicles of Riddick, and New World. He was actually planned to be a supporting role in Steven Spielberg's Minority Report, but he had issues with his visa, so yeah, he wasn't able to. That's the downfall of working in a country that is not a place where you hold a permanent visa. <laughs> You can have visa issues. Let's see. Then we... Well, actually, by the way, Jorik van Wageningen isn't actually very known beforehand here in the Netherlands. So I'm going to call one out just because she came from... Well, she comes from a place that's very close to where I'm from. Saskia Mulder, at least I believe she was that one. No? No, it was another one. Sorry, I'm too far. <laughs> Where was she in the list? I'm like, so... Gone. <laughs> Oh, there. <laughs> I was thinking like she had a name here somewhere. But yeah, Saskia Mulder uh, wasn't also too popular. She had roles in The Beach, The Descent, and The Descent Part 2. And that was basically like one of the few things I could even find about her. So she's not like really known. But in early 2010, a new wave of film talent made its way to international success. Talents emerge uh, during the decade include Marwan Kanzari, even though he doesn't sound Dutch in name. <laughs> I didn't even know he was Dutch. And he has some pretty famous movies and actually at least a movie I have seen. Uh, so yeah, I went to look that up and I was like, Seriously, is this guy Dutch? He doesn't look Dutch. He doesn't sound Dutch. At least not in the films, but that doesn't always say something. And yeah, his name also isn't very Dutch. 
But yeah, alongside him, uh, Lotte van Beek, Sylvia Hoeks and Michiel Husman. So, Kanzari, which I called be out before, uh, made his uh, breakthrough in the Dutch film Wolf. And he made his US debut in the film Collide with Anthony Hopkins. Films like Ben-Hur, The Mummy and The Murder on the Orient Express soon followed. In 2017, it was announced that Kanzari would play, drum roll, the villain Jafar and Disney's live action adaptation of Aladdin, which I have seen and I didn't know it was him. I didn't know it was a Dutch guy that played Jafar. So in case you also didn't know, well, now you know. Jafar is played by a, a Dutch guy. Placing a few more drills because then this part is done. So, yeah, he is kind of known. For the next one, we have Lotte Verbeek. She uh, booked success playing international TV shows like The Borgias, Outlander, The Blacklist, uh, Marvel's Agent Carter. I don't know what, what role she played there. Quickly take a look. Uh, oh, Anna Jarvis. And in the blacklist, she played Katrina Rostova. Just from my own ease of mind. Zips. Go and be done to where I was last call. Um, yeah, and then we have Sylvia Hooks played in the film The Girl and Death and The Best Offer. <laughs> and that means that my daughter most likely is going to the toilet. Oh, I had a lot more of this symbol here. But yeah, so uh, Sylvia Hooks was the woman I mentioned. She is the one coming from a place pretty close from where I grew up. I actually worked in that place. It's called Marese and it's in the province of North Brabant. And uh, it's about a 10 minute drive from where I grew up. It's like an hour long from where I'm now, but... <laughs> so yeah, for Dutch doing, I moved pretty far away, but yeah. But it being nowadays, it's not that strange anymore. I have family all over the place. So, and then we also have Michiel Huisman. He appeared in The Young Victoria, World War Z, The Age of Adeline. And he also played the role of Dario Naharis on Game of Thrones. So in Game of Thrones, there were actually two Dutch people. Because if you by any chance remembered my talk about last year, we also had Caris van, van, Houten. van Houten. I wanted to say from, then von. So yeah, I went to different languages to say von, <laughs> which is from. <laughs> but yeah, Caris van Houten. Uh, she played, if memory serves me correct, Melisandre. So two Dutchies in one series. Then we also have behind the scenes people. We have uh, cameraman Theo van der Sande. Uh, van der Sande, sorry. He has shot films such as Cruel Intentions and Blade. And other indiv individuals with international credits in Hollywood. Uh, sound designer Charles Din. 
Oscar-winning director Marlene Gores, who made a number of international productions, including the 1997 adaptation of Mrs. Dalloway. Um, Sylvia Crystal, uh, much, most famous for her role as Emmanuel in the series of softcore movies. Actually, no clue. But she also appeared in a large number of lesser-known American TV movies and movies, of which the Nutbaum, a feature film adaptation of the TV series Get Smart, is probably the most noble. Let's see, let's see, let's see. You need to say like many are just called out and I can't see any like really known my movies. Roger Stoffers, who shot a number of US box office hits in the 2000s, most notably Disturbia. The tall man, Karl Strucken, whose physique landed him the part of Lurch in The Addams Family. It's the 1991 version, if I'm correct. And he also played the giant in Twin Peaks. He is also Dutch. I saw his name and I was like, I'm going to look it up. I saw his face and I was like, seriously? Even I recognize the man and I haven't seen the Adams Family. Or Twin Peaks. Can't say I have seen anything where he like plays regular, well, all regular roles, but yeah, like nor the films I normally watch, there aren't many that he plays in. But yeah, even I recognized him. I was like, oh, seriously, is he Dutch? So I said it to my husband. He was like, oh. <laughs> so yeah, even two Dutchies don't know every Dutch actors. Or actresses, obviously. Also, a lot of them I don't know because I don't watch a lot of like actual Dutch TV and films. So that doesn't help. That also makes that you're not as well versed in like the Dutch people because many times they play in a lot of films. And I see that I forgot a few. And I forgot also a few of it. Starting off great. <laughs> Forgetting already some drills. Yeah, so I didn't know that the guy who played Lurch in the Adams Family was actually Dutch. So that was a fun surprise. So then I'm going to switch to the color I missed a few of. And that is this one. And that's why I keep the numbers in the bag. Numbers or letters or whatever you want to call them. Symbols. Just in case I forget something, I can just take a few out. Because then I still know which symbol is what. Which makes it a lot easier, because it wouldn't be the first time that I forget some drills. <laughs> so yeah, I'm that bad with those kind of things. So yeah. Now we're going to take this color. You do need to say I have cold hands. So I think before I go to bed in a bit, well, after filming like my filming marathon today, because I have a couple I need to film. I still even have more that I can film, but yeah, I'm not going to do everything today because that's too much. Most of the times I film just one day a week and do like batch filming. So now 
I'm ready for the next color. So where was I? Yeah, then we have like a list of acclaimed Dutch directors, but I'm not going to call them all them because I can't say what they are known for because there are no examples of what they did listed. So yeah, I can say names, but if you don't know what they are known for, you don't know if you've seen any of it. So yeah, that's not really working out that much. Yeah, did you know any of these actors or actresses, directors and other people in movies? So I'm just going to leave it at this. Click that away and close that thing. So I can just ramble on and have it a little bit more flowy than ready. <laughs> but yeah, was there a name that sounded familiar to you? And you're like, I think I have known that people, that person, or were there even people that you know are Dutch? Or do they just sound Dutch to you? But yeah, if you're from a country that isn't like the States, where I think many people know the actors from i do also well know where they're from because yeah they're from the stage states have words also the uk i feel is like many of the actors are known that they are from like the uk a few are known that are from australia but do you live in a country where not many people know that you have movie people let's call them like that from your country like people that are pretty famous like for example Paul Verhoeven of Kirk Ries van Houten but not many people know that they are from your country so in my case the Netherlands because yeah I do know that the people that watch my videos are from all over the place I do still think that most of you all are from the United States, but oh well. Also, like, I I just remember, I think that I wanted to ask you like a couple of weeks ago, and I don't believe I have already asked it. But where you're from, is it normal that when you're going to a film slash movie, however you want to call it, in the theaters, how normal is it for you to have a break in the movie? Because we're here we have like halfway in the movie, you have a little break so you can stretch your legs, refill your drinks, well get new drinks, <laughs> I can better say it like that because refilling isn't like a big thing here. And I need to look at my camera. Yes, I'm filming. Okay, I thought I heard my camera turn off. <laughs> so I was a little bit scared that it turned itself off. And that was the door that my daughter came from the bathroom. <laughs> she did took a while today. <laughs> I know too much information and probably not interesting information. <laughs> but yeah, there you have it. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So, breaks in the movies. And there's somebody flushed. <laughs> also, that's the thing that you can do in a break of a movie in theaters. Because, yeah, you have, most of the times it's 15 minutes. So you can get yourself a new drink. You can get yourself a new snack. You can use the toilets. Stretch your legs. If you're a smoker, you can have a quick smoke, I think. I don't know if they have like indoor smoking areas. Yeah, I'm not a smoker, so I don't know. That are not things that are interesting for me to know. <laughs> yeah, so are there breaks for you 
in a movie. Because as far as I understood from the people we know here, because yeah, in the place I live, we have a lot of people from mainly the United States. And a few times we have talked about like going to the movies with them. And they say that apparently in the States, or at least in, at least in part of the States then, they don't have a break in the movies. So, yeah, if you have a movie that's three hours long, you need to stay seated. And if you need to go to the bathroom hit really, really bad, then you, yeah, are just out of luck. But yeah, here you have a break halfway into the movie. Yeah, and then the movie just continues. So that's also a thing like if you plan on going to the movies and you need to go somewhere after and you know like the movie is two hours you do need to keep in mind that it takes another 15 minutes for the movie to be done because you have a little break in the movie so that's also a thing you need to keep in mind if you go to the movie theaters in the netherlands but yeah, is that a thing that's also normal where you are from? Let me know. Like, let me know, like, what country you're from. And if you're from the States, like, what area, like, what state. Because, yeah, I can look up the States. <laughs> I do know where a few are, but, yeah, I'm not very familiar <laughs> with the States. But I do think that also, like, many people from the U.S., don't exactly know where, for example, the Netherlands are in Europe. So I think it's like, just like I know states in America many times. It's like either I know them by name or I know like general area of the, sta of the state. But I can't pinpoint it if you give me a map. But I also don't know the same with Europe. Well, you don't know the same for Europe as just as I have from the States. And yeah, I do know a lot of like the countries here in Europe. But that's the same as you have with states in the United States. So I guess that's a little bit of like a thing. Like many times people are like, oh, the Americans don't know the countries in Europe. Yeah. But we also made of the time don't know the states from United States. I couldn't list them up all, all together because yeah, there are a lot of them, but there are also a lot of European countries. I do need to say most of them I know. And I can point it at the map pretty quickly. So, yeah, I think that's a case of like, however point you look at it. <laughs> Depends on your perspective. But yeah, let me know like what, if you're from the States, what state you're from, if you even go to the movie theaters or, or when you went last time, like even if it's 50 years ago, you can still have an opinion on something. But yeah, answer that down in the comment section below if you would like. And as per usual, you can leave loads of comments. I don't mind. Because yeah, as all the creators, we, almost all of us, I guess, like to interact with people that watch our videos. Also, for us to know, like, what do people like to see? Because I can ramble on about random stuff about the Netherlands, but if you guys all don't give a rat's behind, let's call it nice. <laughs> if you all don't give a rat's behind about what I'm talking about, I can better think of things that you all want to hear about. So, yeah, let me know. Yeah, so that's, I think, Movies and Diamonds for this year. I hope you liked this. This is the second year I've done it, and as of the point of filming this, 
I'm not entirely sure if there even is going to come a third year. But it's open for debate at this point in time. But yeah, I don't think I will do it next year. Let me know if you really, really would like it. But yeah, we'll see. We will see, we will see. But yeah, in case you're only here for the movies and diamonds part, we're just going to have to part ways here because I am now going to ramble on about life stuff. So in case you don't find that interesting, I think we can better part ways here than for me to bore you. So in case you're going to leave for now, I hope you liked this video. If you did, you know the drill. Like, subscribe and all the fun stuff. And I still like to hope you to see you in another video. And if you're still here and you're going to keep continue listening to my rambles, well, thank you. Also for you cats, I hope you enjoy it. Also, hit the subscribe button if and the la, the la, la, la. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. That's the word I wanted to say. And if you already have, well, or if you haven't and just want to randomly watch this video, please give this video a thumbs up so I know you like it. A thumbs down if you dislike it. That's also fine by me. If this video gets like 50 dislikes, at least I know you don't like this kind of video. <laughs> Still helps me out. So, yeah, with that being said, back to the random rambles. Because that's what I'm known for best, I think. <laughs> well, technically, I think like my time lapses are, are what is my number one go to thing. But yeah, I really do like to do time lapse videos. But yeah, let's think. Let's think, let's think. Where did we leave off last week? On Tuesday, probably. So on Wednesday, what did we do? Yeah, we, well, I did some pinning with the kids. I got them two of these little, like, paint by, not paint by numbers, more paint by example. <laughs> Things for the kids, they were like really small canvases, like just a little bit bigger than the canvas I'm working on right now, and it's this big. <laughs> I believe like about 20 by 20. So I think those would have been 20 by 30 or something. So my son made one, my daughter made one. They did pretty good. It was fun. So yeah, that was the first time doing something like that. Yeah, enjoyed it. Thank goodness. <laughs> Still have one laying around for our daughter. So she might want to do one like tomorrow or I don't know. The paint that was in it for that came with the kit was not very, very very hard to open. So yeah, it's a kid craft, but even I struggled with it, so I don't want to know how the kids would have done it, but oh well. So I did that on Wednesday. Husband and I did our regular date night. Wednesday evening we watched um, Charmed, I think we're now at season seven, like halfway through, I think. So we're getting there. Tomorrow, or at least for me tomorrow, today, if you watch this when I upload this, we're probably going to see the new Netflix series of Avatar, The Last Airbender, because we both loved the animation version. As far as I have seen so far, it looks really good. Yeah, so I'm curious about that one. 
I always loved that show when I grew up. I like absolutely loved it. The movie, it was bad. It was really bad. Yeah, so far, and as far as I have seen, like a little bit of information, it's pretty true to the, the animated version. So, it will be interesting how they mashed everything together because, yeah, they made like, I believe, 10 ish episodes from like book one, the first season. I believe it had like 20 something, around 20 in like the animated version but they were also like 15 ish minutes instead of the hour give or take from the new series so i'm pretty sure pretty curious how they handled that as i said as far as i have seen now it looks good So not much happened on Thursday. On Friday, my daughter was off school because again, they had a study day, which they again will have tomorrow. So I don't need to wake up early, but it ended up being very good that they had a study day because the kids were sick. Mostly our daughter. She was also like almost sick for the entire weekend. Son basically like on Friday, I believe, and maybe a little bit on Saturday. So yeah, we didn't do it a whole lot this weekend. Did on Sunday a cleaning marathon. I did clean, deep clean like a few stuff from the kitchen like from the stove and stuff so that's deep cleaned again so happy with that on friday i believe if not even saturday my husband came up with the notification to me don't know about what we were talking about but it was something to do with like this week and he all of a sudden was, was like that i didn't need to to do something or I did need to do something. I'm not entirely sure. Like this week, I was like, what? Why? I was like, yeah, because I'm off. I was like, oh, nice that you gave me a heads up <laughs> that you're off for an entire week. Not that I don't like it. Don't get me wrong. I love that my husband said the home. But yeah, it was a bit of a case of like, yeah, it would have been nice to have a heads up. But yeah, I was like, yeah, I told you that I wanted to have like a vacation in like end of February. I was like, yeah, you told me that like two, three months ago. You think my brain at this point in time can remember? And planning to do that and actually doing that are two different things. <laughs> Especially with my husband. Wouldn't be the first time that he says like, oh, I want to do this or that and actually doesn't do it. It was also like pretty annoying weather last week. So the things that we actually wanted to do, like fix our rolling blinds, like again. Yeah, that didn't work because it was raining and I'm not going to stand in the rain for like an hour if it doesn't work along just because to I want to have that thing fixed. Did work in the garden for a little bit though, but that was like in between the rain. <laughs> Yes, as I said, kids were sick. Mostly like Friday and Saturday. Daughter was not feeling entirely good on Sunday. Thankfully, yesterday for me, so Monday, she was all good. Then Sunday night, on Monday, my husband got sick. I wasn't feeling the greatest, but at least everything kept where it needed to be. My husband 
spent the entire, well, a big part of the night on the couch because then he was closer to the toilet and didn't need to walk around me the entire time. So I'm not going to get into more detail than that. <laughs> So yeah, that was fun. He was good that he had a vacation or just bad, just how you depend to watch it, to look at it. But yeah, the first day of his vacation, he was sick in bed. So yeah, last week, over the weekend, he was like saying that he could like this entire week bring our daughter to school. Well, obviously, except the Wednesday because then he didn't go to school, but. Yeah, the other day she, he could bring her to school and Monday rolls around and he's in bed. <laughs> I was like, seriously? <laughs> Not that I care, I'd rather have him feeling well than taking my daughter to school. But it was a little bit of a case of like, well, there goes that plan. <laughs> but at least he let me stay in this morning. So yeah, he brought our daughter to school this morning. So I could just nicely stay in bed because he took our son with him. So I could just nicely read on my phone like updates and stuff and look around a bit and get out of my bed the easy way. Instead of like waking up and needing to be on, <laughs> which I really dislike. <laughs> I rather take like two hours for me to get out of the bed and start. We'll start my day. So yeah, after that we went uh, clothes shopping for our son because he has not let a lot of summer clothes left because he's gone like up in size, like one or two sizes. I think like the end of last year he was maybe like just going in a size bigger. Thankfully uh, that size the clothes that we had were a lot of them were giving to a, given to us by our sister-in-law. Well my sister-in-law. <laughs> my husband's sister, not sister-in-law, because I don't have any sisters. Also no brothers, but <laughs> that's beside the point. <laughs> Yeah, so we didn't have a lot of clothes that we needed to buy for him, so that's good. But yeah, for the size he's in now, or at least he's starting to get in, I had like, I believe, three t-shirts with short sleeves. So yeah, I was like, yeah, we're going to buy them now, so I don't need to make sure to like run to the store. Whenever the weather is getting good enough for short sleeved t-shirts. Because yeah, I dislike that and I also like need to go to the store and directly after like needing to wash them out and stuff because I always want to clean out the clothes before, especially the kids wear them. It's also a thing I did over the weekend. I did like all the clothes we bought lately, like we had I had collected enough for me to make it worth to do like a small machine to just flush that, <laughs> flush everything out that doesn't need to be in it. So I did that. I had a lot of stuff hanging everywhere because most of the times it's stuff that can't be in the drawer. Can't go into the dryer because I've gotten myself a few shirts lately. They all had like a print that's like a plasticky kind of material. So if I do that in the dryer too much, it just comes off. And yeah, that's not what I'm planning to do. So yeah, now I'm just collecting the new batch of stuff that needs to be flushed out, <laughs> to call it without a better word. So 
So that's collecting. So in case I, when I have enough or I have something that I like need like pretty soon, then I do a bigger load instead of like multiple times, like not even a half load. What else did we do? Didn't do much actually because yeah, kids were sick over the weekend. Did the clothes shopping today. Did some arranging on my table. So now our son doesn't need to sit on the head of the table. He can just sit on a regular place. But we needed to fit it out because yeah, his chair didn't fit. Because yeah, we have a table with six chairs and we needed to move a chair around. So then his high chair can fit there. Because the chairs that we have are a little bit low in comparison to our table. And the uh, high chairs we have are of the Stokke Trip Trap, which is like a grower long basically. You can use them from birth with like special things you put on them. You can even use them to see it a grown up. So that's a thing like why we have those because they can still use them now. We need to move, just move the chairs away. But they just stand in the living room now, so they will be used every once in a while or moved around the table. So they are not like two are almost new and the rest is like completely worn out. <laughs> so that's always another thing. But yeah, so normally where I'm sitting, there would be like my basically my dinner place. <laughs> Over there would be the place where I normally would sit and diamond paint in the evening. Well, actually, like my time lapse, because there, just a little bit over there, because the entire place is where I do my time lapses, and only there was the part where I would do like the entire, like whipping jets and stuff. But yeah, now I'm sitting here, and I have my laptop sitting right next to me instead of left next to me. So now my husband's laptop and my own are standing like against each other, not against. Um, like the other side of the table from each other. So that's nice. Do need to keep in mind that I don't kick my feet as far like forward than I could do before because now I can't put my feet on the chair on the opposite side of the table because then I put my feet in my husband's lap and that's a bit too high. <laughs> you don't want to overstretch my legs. Yeah, that's about it, I think. Son today did not go to his gym class. Daughter thankfully could go because, yeah, as I said, my husband was at home. So that was a good thing for our daughter because she could now go just to her gym class. Because normally I wouldn't be able to let her go because my son was sick again. He had like around three o'clock when my husband wanted to pick. We were actually wanted to pick our daughter up with like the four of us. Well, the three of us going to pick her up. But he was acting a little bit slow and fussy, which isn't his usual acting. So I took his temperature and he was 38.8 degrees Celsius. So it was a decent fever. During the evening it got worse and worse. So yeah, he went to bed like, I think like even an hour before he normally does. So yeah, and he felt bad. He at that point had a fever of like, 40.3 degrees Celsius. Don't know what it is in very Fahrenheit, but you know what? I'm just going to look it up because I want to know now. <laughs> That's the good thing of having my laptop like sitting right next to me. I can just open Ecosia because that's a free planting like search engine. So if you search have enough search things going, then there is the tree being planted and you have actually like a counter like now 
Close, I don't want to see the ad. Uh, what did I see? 40.3 Celsius, it says here 104.45 degrees Fahrenheit. So, yeah, it's a decent amount of fever. And the 38.8 was 101.84. So, yeah, it was a decent fever. So, yeah, I give him some sort of a medicine to hopefully have him feeling better. At least so he can sleep properly. Because, yeah, that can do loads of wonders. Yeah, since he's sick again... I'm kind of getting afraid because, yeah, as I said, husband has been sick the weekend, daughter and son were sick the weekend, son is sick again, I've been skidding along, even though I have a feeling that, like, my husband being sick was partly, like, due to food because my stomach was also a little bit upset. But my husband, we both have, like, gut issues. Not, like, really major or something, but, yeah, some stuff just get on our gut. <laughs> Instead of our nerves, it gets on our gut. But, yeah, my husband has it, like, on that, like, more like feeling sick. And when I'm... For example, stress, he's like physically getting sick. When I have too much stress and my body is letting it know and I have like gut reactions, let's call it like that. It's like actually like it feels like it's cramping and stuff. So it's still not fun, but it's most of the times just pain. Can work around that most of the times, so. But yeah, if you're feeling like your insights are coming out, that's not the greatest feeling in the world. So, but yeah, both of us were feeling a little bit under the weather. Thankfully for me, it was just a few hours during the night. But my husband was like feeling sick. Okay, a lot of these trills are too big. But yeah, so especially with our son being sick again now and me doing, normally doing most of like the indoor work. So I'm exposed to it a bit more because yeah, I'm a stay at home mom. So yeah, my husband had, goes out the door to his work. So he has his fresh air in the time that he goes there. And he also in his job needs to move around quite a lot from like, office to office and many times it's also like walking outside for stuff so yeah he has a decent amount of fresh air a day i have fresh air when i drop off my daughter at school and pick her up and when i open the windows to air the place out <laughs> which is apparently a very european thing to do like opening all the windows and just let it air out Luchte. You get fresh air in, in the place, so that's nice. But yeah, so I feel like any day now, I'm going to get sick. Knowing me, it will be like at a moment where I can not have it. Like example, in two weeks time, when I need to, when I have like three appointments on three days back to back, Need to go to the dental hygienist first, the day after to my dermatologist again, and the day after that I need to go to the regular dentist. 
So I fear it will be then, because, yeah, there's no worse time than feeling like you're needing to puke the entire time than when you're at the dentist's office. <laughs> so that's no fun. Yeah, so I'm like almost fearing that uh, soon my, my body will be like, nope, not going to happen, and that I'm sick. Because at least that's what normally happens. So in case you don't have a whipping chat next week, well, that's probably why. <laughs> but yeah, I think I'm like all ramble out at this moment. So I'm just going to leave it here. Going to finish this little bit of color that I have left. It is annoying that for a pink symbol we have like a white circle standing here with a black symbol in it but oh well but yeah so i'm going to complete this canvas off screen maybe even just tomorrow depending on how fast my other videos will go in a little bit because if they are fast enough i might be able to finish this one Today, and otherwise it will be most likely tomorrow. So yeah, I'm going to go now. I'm going to film two more videos. One of them will be a cross stitch conversion update. This will actually be the second, well, actually like the fourth, like update. But yeah, this is the second of round versus square. Because I finished round page two. But yeah, I haven't even finished the second part of Diamond Dark Club versus, versus Heaven and Earth design. Because, yeah. Excuse me. I felt that coming up very quickly. <laughs> But yeah, so I have a Diamond Dark Club versus Square Heaven and Earth design still coming up. I think I will be uploading that next week because, yeah, February, I wanted to have everything Movies and Diamonds related. Yeah, and it's now almost March, so I can go up back to the rest that I had planned out. So there may be a few videos that are pretty old by now, but oh well. But yeah, with that being said, I'm going to film off for film a few other videos, which will be seen somewhere in the future. <laughs> with that being said, again, I hope you liked this video. If you did, well, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, and on the fun YouTube stuff. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye, guys.